Hello and welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna share some ink and watercolor techniques perfect for urban sketching. As you know, we do a lot of drawing and painting on location here. So much fun. And I do highly recommend giving observational sketching a try. We did start a sketchbook date series together here on YouTube, and I've been getting many questions on my techniques and different ways that I can approach a sketch. And there are so many, and I love experimenting. But in this video, we're gonna focus on an ink and watercolor technique, similar to my alphabet series, which you may recognize the letter H. For this painting, I started off with an ink drawing and then completed it with some watercolor on top. For demonstration purposes, we will be using a reference, and I'll have some timestamps for you in the video so you can follow along and watch back at any time. To quickly go over the supplies, this sketchbook has 100% cotton watercolor paper. My little hack is to use a 2H or a hard pencil for any sketching not to smudge, a mop brush, a flat brush, and a good round brush that comes to a point. And since we'll be inking, I'm using the Twisby fountain pen that has waterproof ink inside. And of course, we can't forget our watercolor paints. This is a palette with pigments I put together. And if you're curious on that exact setup, I have a video on my channel for you to check out. I've also recently started preparing two glasses of water and it's been helping my workflow, especially when it comes to watercolor and keeping things nice and clean. Feel free to prepare whatever supplies you love. And now let's take a look at the reference. This reference is from unsplash.com, which is a royalty-free website for images. It's a beautiful street in Belgium. And what particularly drew me in was the composition, the colors, and the overall feel. I always love to say that whatever you're drawing or painting, make sure that you are drawn to it, you get that feeling of excitement. So feel free to use a reference of your own that you're drawn to and apply the technique that we'll go over today. Starting off with our pencil, let's begin our sketch. I love leaving room for spontaneity when you're doing the painting and the inking stage, but lightly penciling in the shapes and the placement of your subject can be super helpful, especially when you're studying and learning certain techniques. If you've been watching the channel, you know that I love to jump in straight away with pen sometimes, which is why I love setting intention, especially when you're beginning your creative process. So take note and ask yourself, what is your intention for your creation today? On this scrap piece of paper, let me just show you the kind of technique we're gonna focus on today. Since the sketch is complete, we will be inking in the sketch. Here's just the random shape with some cross hatches. To quickly demonstrate the difference of a wet on wet technique versus wet on dry, here I'm just going in straight with my watercolor on a dry piece of paper, and this is great for layering and adding details. Now the wet on wet technique, we will be wetting our paper first and then adding pigment to the wet area. This is great for a soft diffused look, some beautiful color blending and some awesome granulation. For this painting, let's try the wet on wet technique, but I like to combine both. I'll show you what I mean shortly. Grabbing our ink pen, which has waterproof ink inside, using waterproof ink will allow it not to smudge when we begin painting watercolor on top. Depending on the look you're going for, I really love having a sort of a messy include line variation so that there's a little bit of character and personality in the line work as well. If you've ever seen certain sketches or different artists with different line work, the personality shows through even in the brush strokes, which is why I like to say that each line has a character kind of of its own. So think about the energy and feel you want your lines to have. Try and experiment with some variety, maybe some dots, maybe you want to include lighter lines, a little bit darker. This will create a lot of depth and dimension to your drawings and paintings as well. So as you're inking, don't even be afraid to change up the drawing a little bit from your pencil. The pencil is there for guidance and there are no mistakes, so feel free to change it up, go over it, and create even more dimension and personality as you go on. Let your voice come through in your sketches, get loose with your mark making, and let your pen just dance on the paper. And if it helps to put on a song or something, that's a great idea for some inspiration too.
As I'm inking in my sketch, I always like to add more dimension by shading in some areas darker than the others. In this stage, I'm focusing on all of the shadow shapes that I see. And as we add some depth, a quick word from our awesome sponsors, Squarespace. For the past few years, I've been managing my shop, building my business as a full-time artist and art coach, and many thanks to Squarespace and their all-in-one platform, and their award-winning templates that allow you to fully customize your portfolio and your shop. I loved how user-friendly it was for me to get started, and I'm super glad I did it early on in my career because I was able to direct people to a place where they can view my shop, some of my sketches, and simply get to know me better. And to this day, one of my favorite features is how mobile-friendly the templates are. And it was cool to know because the analytics let me know that most people are going on on their mobile devices. Try it out by going to squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com forward slash jesscarp for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now, since we have a nice spread going, let's swatch out our color palette. So this way we get a good feel of the colors and pigments we're gonna use for this exact painting. Personally, I also love to do a mini thumbnail painting or sketch on the bottom left corner. Totally optional, but it's a great way to get to know the pigments and just get a good little trial round. And for me, it allows me to let go of perfection and loosen up a little bit. That's the beauty of the thumbnail phase and the sketch phase learning to slow down and really get a feel of the composition, not getting too much into detail because the thumbnail is pretty tiny. So it also forces you to focus on the big shapes. Let's take a clean brush and some clean water to start our wet on wet technique, we are going to wet our whole paper and the area of our sketch with water. This is where a good paper comes in because it's able to hold a lot of water and it's gonna allow you to really focus on a beautiful wet on wet technique. Specifically for watercolor, this is one of the most important art supplies. Starting off with my Naples yellow pigment, I'm going to be shading in the left side of the sketch. This is the building over on the left and I'm making sure I'm working relatively quickly while the paper is wet. And for this first layer, I'm just working around the whole sketch to fill out this base layer. And essentially, we're just adding pigment to the wet areas to fill up our paper. Keep in mind that we're gonna be working in layers, and while the paper is wet, you can keep adding pigments and seeing how they blend. So just have fun with this process. Feel free to add as much color or different colors from the reference. Let it come intuitively to you, Watercolor is super freeing and super fun, so be sure to enjoy the process. That's all that matters. Once the base layer has dried, I begin adding more shadow tones and working my way from light to dark. I love using deep purples and deep blues. And these next few layers are where we focus on building up color, building up value. And this requires some patience, so just be patient with yourself and just take your time. Throughout my painting process, I like to start with big brushes and work my way down to ones that come to a more detailed, smaller point. Starting off with your biggest brushes allows you not to jump into detail right away and just really focus on the big picture before jumping into those tiny little crevices. And now speaking of details, the last and final thing I love to do is adding some highlights in the areas that got lost a little bit. Another way to go around this is to use masking fluid, but like I said, there's tons of different ways and approaches and techniques to art, so just feel free to experiment with all of it. For the highlights, which is optional, you can use a gel pen, acrylic gouache, but for this sketch, I'm using a white acrylic marker. This really brings the last stage of the sketch together, and sometimes I like to paint over it a little bit to kind of glaze the color, and yep, don't forget to use your finger to get a nice texture and diffuse the look a bit. If you like this process and you want to learn some real-time tutorials, I have some videos on my Patreon and we also do live events together where we break down the process nice and slow. There's a full library of worksheets, tips, and exclusive videos for you guys on there. So if you want a little bit of extra goodies, you can definitely check that out. 
Oh, and I also have a Happy Mail tier, so if you want to receive this exact print, and if you join any time in May, you'll have access, and it'll be delivered straight to your home along with a sticker and another postcard as well. I just opened up some spots, so be sure to grab them before they're gone. And here's the finished result. I hope you guys enjoyed this process and I hope you found it helpful. Let me know in the comments below what was something that you learned today or simply just drop by and say hello. I'm so grateful for you and I'm so happy that you came to stop by today. I'm wishing you an amazing day and night wherever you are. If you want to keep your creative habits up high this year, check out this video I have on the screen. I promise it'll boost you up with some inspiration and motivation and I'll see you guys in the next one.